Hey everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sean. And we watched a movie. Sure did. Or two. We've watched a few movies lately. Um, the Fantasia Film Festival, one of our favorite film festivals, was on. It is a horror and a genre film festival. Yeah, it's got weird Translation, stuff. exactly that. Every weird kind of permutation of movie is there, has been there, will be there. It is a wonderful cinematic experience it's a ton to get of fun. lost in. Yeah. And everyone that goes there is into is it. Into is it. Super 100% into, it. into yeah. it. It's really good. Yes. So, of course, uh, this year most film festivals are uh, very changed from their normal experience. Usually we get to go to the lovely city of Montreal for this one, and this year we enjoyed it from our laptops at home. So that's different and a little sad because the crowds are so great and because they get, you know, directors from all over the world. Uh, genre filmmaking is really big in like Japan and Korea. We've seen people from all over the place come into this. Yeah, and it really makes you appreciate, I mean, we're only two hours away from Montreal, so sure, we've heard of it, mm -hmm. but this festival is well known. Uh, throughout the this community mm -hmm. of filmmakers for sure and that's awesome to see that people are excited to be there. <laughs> yes so uh, <clears throat> we watched a movie called alone and uh, when I was looking it up I read Sean the description the IMDB description and while we're watching the movie, we realized this is not that movie. <laughs> like, I had read something about, like, infection, pandemic, and so we were like, ooh, we know what we're getting into. And then you see, like, a woman driving alone on the, <laughs> on the highway, and you're yeah, like, just in the Pacific Northwest. what's, what's yeah. going to happen? <laughs> and what happens is, like, a guy starts following her and then abducts her. So that's not what we thought that's we signed up for. Still scary. Um, <laughs> yes. I was looking at a whole different movie that we have now also watched because it's on Netflix. But I'll tell you the really embarrassing thing is that the Fantasia Film Festival, which we'll review first, is called Alone. But the other one's called Alive. And I could not tell that apart, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what happened Close to me. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> Anyways, both of those, like, one-word titles are very hard. There's a lot of movies called Alive and Alone already in the world. We probably didn't need two more, but we got them. Uh, this Alive has a hashtag yes. to distinguish itself. Ooh, yeah. So Alone is the one about a woman, Jessica. She's played by Jules Wilcox. A woman who I will say, you know, this is an independent film, so it's not, like, big talent. But I think she She's had good. big talent yeah, uh, and I she agree. was a bit of a chameleon because, you know, when she is alone, you feel her vulnerability. Every woman feels that vulnerability of driving alone at night. And just that enough for us is a horror movie. It really is just that feeling of anything could happen. Even if a cop pulls you over, is it really a cop? Am I safe out here? What if I get a flat tire? What if somebody stops to help me? Of course, you should want that to happen, and yet for women, that's actually the worst case scenario, is if somebody pulls over. Because in every horror movie, that somebody is a bad person, and obviously that happens too often in real life, too. Yep. So, um, all day long, she's kind of had this like cat and mouse thing with this guy driving a Jeep. And he's a creep to her on the road. You know, he's driving he's really slow, but when she passes him, he speeds up. And, you know, it's annoying. Of course, she awkwardly runs into him at the rest stop, you know, a side of the highway. What do you call those? Gas Service. Station. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they go back and forth like this. So you know something is coming. That's what we've signed on for. This is a horror movie. And yeah. Eventually shit goes down and he kidnaps her. Well, not kidnaps her. Kidnap is such a specific thing. I guess is maybe not specific to children, but I feel like you need to hold a ransom. Yeah. Uh, he is not holding her for ransom. No. He is holding her for his own- For bad stuff. Yeah. Chained up in a basement is where she wakes yeah. up. Which is scary as heck, of yeah, course. Yeah, it is. That's one of the situations where you know you either escape or you're going to be murdered. Yeah. Well, murder is actually the best oh, case true. scenario yeah. at that point, in my opinion. 
Good point. Um, but she does escape, and I was really mad at her. <laughs> who, who would see this coming? But I was really mad at her because at least now that she's abducted and chained, chained in the basement, like I know the bad part has happened <laughs> and I can just relax now and know like, okay, there's going to be some like torture porn and probably a little rape. But anyways, I can deal with it. I know the bad stuff is over, but no, she escapes his house, but now she is just lost in the woods around this completely remote cabin. And so now she has to survive the woods and him, because guess what? He's very persistent. He's very persistent. Yeah. So now she's actually fighting two foes, two death threats, and that's worse than one. Two is worse than one. And now the worst part is not over. It's still coming. It is haunting every leaf and tree and shrub in that forest. <laughs> I mean, she slept. Do you think I could sleep? No. I was more fearful on her behalf than what she was for herself. It's which true. is true. You were crazy. trying to look out for her. Well, I can't <laughs> help it. This is why I should not watch horror movies in a it theater is. because I am a yeller. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> Hashtag alone. <laughs> she was alone. Yes, she, she was. Didn't like it. Well, why would she? No. I mean, well, she would I mean, have rather been alone than yeah, being, being pursued him. by exactly. a freak. You don't want to be held captive by a weirdo either. Anyways, uh, the weirdo <laughs> was played by Mark Menchaca. And just a little earlier that day, I had read this article uh, for actors, and it was basically telling them, you know what, the best thing you can do for yourself is to ask trusted acting colleagues and directors and casting directors, what is your type? And they're like, don't trust yourself, don't ask your mom, Ask people in the business, what is my type? Because that's the best way for you to narrow down parts that are appropriate for you. And I just wondered who it was that looked this guy dead in the eye and said, pervert. <laughs> You're the creep. Someone did. And someone did. And, and for they good were reason. Right. <laughs> well, okay, he grew a mustache. Let's assume he doesn't have a mustache every day. Yeah, but still. <laughs> He was very good in this movie. Yeah, he is super creepy. But I have to say, what I really liked about this script is it kind of subverted some of your expectations of who the captor and, and who the captor guy, what, that's a bad, abductor, abductor is the word I'm looking for, thanks Sean, who an abductor is and who a victim is, and it kind of turns that around a little bit which I thought was kind of a fun spin because we've seen enough of these movies. We're a little savvy to it. The victim should be a little more savvy, frankly. She, that's why we should watch horror movies so we know what to expect when a Jeep is like, you know, flashing his lights at you. Yep, it's true. <laughs> now we know. There's a creep behind the wheel. That's right. So director John Hyams does a good job of keeping that tension going. Absolutely. It wasn't fair, you think you get over the worst hump, but no, there's so many more humps to come. <sighs> yeah, it's a oh, tough one. Gosh. It's good though. Yeah. So it was good. It was very successful in keeping us very tense and very attentive and uh, really worried on her behalf, more than even she herself. Yep. Okay, so the next one we watched was on Netflix. It is available on next Netflix. It's a Korean film, and you know what that means. They're very good at the horror. And Hashtag alive. And the zombies. And the zombies. So this one is the one where a rapid spread of an unknown infection. Corona. Well, that is the new filter with which we will watch all of these movies, yeah. isn't it? It is. Uh, it used to be about zombies. When you heard like an infection, you were like, is it zombies? For a while, we're like, is it Ebola? Um, now it's going to be like, there aren't going to be zombies. They're just going to be pale people coughing. And you're going to be like, <laughs> get away from me. <clears throat> Don't come in my apartment. Yes. So in this case, uh, they never call them zombies, but they look an awful lot like zombies. They're zombies. You know, yeah, they're absolutely. cannibalistic, yeah. blood-crazed zombies. Uh, I was saying to Sean, I always like to figure out what any movie's rules about zombies are because they change. 
Uh, the, the, our expectations of zombies are a little bit more broadened these days because it, I feel like zombies used to be really slow and clumsy and now they can run, which is not fair. I thought that was no, the one fair. advantage I had. Now, ever since that twerp Jesse Eisenberg told me I needed <laughs> cardio for zombies, I was like, I'm out. Count me You're out. out anyway. <laughs> You're not going to tolerate a zombie apocalypse. No. And I'm too good eating, I think. <laughs> I'm irresistible. <laughs> it's true. Um, so, yeah, this guy awakes alone in his apartment. The rest of his family has gone on a little trip, but he stayed behind because he's a loser. And his mom is like, here's some money for groceries, even though he is a grown man. He is. And his mom's like, you know, don't play video games the whole time. But he plays video games the whole time. So much so that a zombie apocalypse starts without him noticing. Yep. Um, but as soon as somebody in the game is like, what's going on? He looks up and he notices that like nearly everyone in his apartment building, he lives in a sky rise apartment building. Uh, everybody is running and screaming. So this apocalypse was actually very quick. Very quick. <laughs> and it was a very fast yeah. spreading virus, whatever this is. Yeah, it was. Uh, not as fast as Corona, but no. close. I know. Well, that's one of the things now, right? Where yeah. they, this is transmitted <laughs> only through blood. And you're like, yeah. ah, that's yeah. no issue at all. I could definitely not stuff. You know, have someone bleed on me. It's yeah. the droplets, <laughs> guys. It's COVID droplets. Yeah. <laughs> so it does make him seem like a pussy. But yeah. anyways, <laughs> he's decided the way he's going to survive is by never leaving his apartment. Which, yes quarantine, isolate. Yeah. That's, it's you know, theory. we know yeah. what that feels like. So we feel for him. Of but he course, didn't go grocery shopping. Oh, Sean, he didn't go grocery shopping like his mother told yeah. him he should, and he didn't do it. So he's got very little food in that apartment. So he maybe won't get eaten by zombies. He might just eat himself alive. <laughs> like, yeah. this could be like starvation will get him first, which is disappointing. Yeah, it is. You know, in the zombie apocalypse, it's embarrassing to die of <laughs> anything else, really. But there you go. There you have it. So John Woo, this guy, uh, he's Jun Woo, sorry. Jun Woo is the character's name. He's played by uh, Ah In Yu. He's very good. He, you definitely believe him as a slacker and a yes, you do. embarrassment for the family. <laughs> <laughs> That's his type. Uh, that is. Uh, and I just thought it was funny how director Ilcho has to work in, you know, the vlogs that he, he upstates people. He gets uh, drone footage of the zombies and he's trying to get pictures with a selfie stick. So he kind of like incorporates this modern world, which does make it feel a little more like COVID. Like we, we had an app on our phones telling us, you know, if anyone infected was nearby. They're nearby. <laughs> they are, yes. <laughs> um, so this guy really uh, is going to maybe die of loneliness before he dies of starvation or zombies. Um, and he's very like on the brink of things when a laser pointer, and this was not really great technology wise, <laughs> who still has a laser pointer? Like 1995 yep. call <laughs> and it said stop. It did. Um, Those are all confiscated now. <laughs> yes, in the airports, even yeah. before tweezers, even before 9-11, the airports took those away. So you been a beautiful young woman in the neighboring apartment complex, has, I guess, been watching him <laughs> through her binoculars this time, and she wanted to just give him a message of hope. Oh, even though they can't really communicate because they're too far apart. So she is played by Shin Hai Park. Um, so now these two are still alone, but a little less lonely now that they sort they of have each, each other. other. And they like wave from their balconies at seven o'clock every day. And it's very sweet and pure. Yes, yeah, like the, the videos from Italy earlier yeah, on. Yes, that's true. That's a good comparison. That That is the freaky... Thing in all of this is the ways that you can compare it to what to happened to life. us, to yeah. what is continuing to happen yeah. to us. It is not over and we are very much aware of that since we are having these film festivals in our home. Um, but I thought this one also was very good. It was good. Uh, I was not disappointed. No, uh, it, it, was... it does a zombie mm -hmm. genre 
pretty new. Yeah. Uh, as as much as you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a million zombie movies, but sure. yeah, this feels like a new take on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I am very partial to films where kind of life goes on even when the crazy has hit the fan. <laughs> and so I really liked this about it, that they could have like this mild flirtation going, even though they're watching them starve to death. And if somebody's a minute late to their seven o'clock apartment, you've assumed the worst. Yeah. Oh boy. So yeah, so then the question is, should they continue to stay in the relative safety of isolation, even though hunger is going to get them? Or should they venture out together or alone? Oh boy. Uh, there's a bit of heartache in those decisions. And sure there are. You, you want to see their love win the day. But they have to stay alive. But they have to stay alive. Hashtag. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. That was one of the last garbled messages he had from his family was to survive. And so he is motivated to do it for mom and dad, yep. who he hasn't seen in all of this time. <sighs> he even starts to like think fondly of them. <laughs> yeah, that, that's saying something. <laughs> yes. They were hassling him before, mm -hmm. but now he misses it. Yeah. Well, they're not telling him to get a job anymore, so. Pros and cons. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so that one is available on Netflix, and if you like the zombie genre, I think you will not be disappointed I with this so one. I think so too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hashtag alive. Look it up. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.